What's up, and you guys? And we back. Hey, y'all like And we back. And we back. And we back. Well, what a warm welcome back. It's Fallon, OKC, and Reagan at Reagan Alexis. <laughs> and we are Backstage OKC. We have a really special friend. A very special friend. Like, I recently became friends with you, and I love watching your snap. It's oh, super funny. No, I stay egg. <laughs> Snap no, What's you up, do. Snap you squad? really do. You're really entertaining yeah. to be an entertainer. Yeah. Who said it? He snapped a vape. He'd be out here. No, snap seriously. active. You hear me? I'm we met at like a brunch randomly. Definitely. And then just stayed in touch. <laughs> and then definitely met before I did. But we all worked together recently. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all did an event at Greystone yeah, with one cool. of our former backstage OKC. Shop um, yeah. Speaking of Shop P, I got my Shop P hoodie on, man. Hey, Shout if you guys out. want to know more about her, you can check out that episode episode earlier. Yeah. But today we had T G hey, of P Z E N T hey, hey, hey. Hey. in the mofo B U I L D I N G. Hey, it's good. Nice. I'm telling you, Sesame Street. Try to get her. Hey, can you sign her? Yeah, we ready. We got we got mofo for your artist too. Actually. But let's talk about you though, because you have a lot that you're working on. You. Our president. <laughs> I mean, let's go a little bit in detail about how you actually started your career. Cause you, I feel like a lot of people don't know. Cause I didn't know this until we spoke. Right. Is that you've been in this a long time? Like as yeah. long as like JB and Josh and yes, a lot of the yes, older definitely. local rap crowd. Like so, you've been out here for a while. Yeah, definitely. Man, like this one is deeper than hip hop for me. Like uh, I've been around this game for a while, man. Like uh, I started my first label in '03. Um, PZNT, I'm the CEO, and uh, we had a hit record in like 03 when first, well, was at 05, I think. Uh, what song was that? Y'all ain't ready. It was on 103.5, the very first year the radio station came out. Me, Kurt Dog, Polo, all those kids had records heavy on the radio station. Then, okay. due to uh, circumstances, I got incarcerated. So I got back out, and um, I teamed up. Well, before I got incarcerated, I was working with a uh, President's Trap House. I know you Mike Smiley, Rock Bottom, mm -hmm. Mouse, Chop Chop. It was all my brothers, comrades. <clears throat> and then uh, when I came home, me and Bottom kind of linked up, and I just got back to working. So I've been home for about four years, and I'm running laps around shit. <laughs> but you're doing it really well because, yeah. like, I just recently noticed you within the past year. And after listening to some of your music and looking at your work, it's not what I would expect, but it's really good quality. It's like something that I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I definitely want to show people outside of Oklahoma City to let them know this is what we're working with because it's exciting. I mean, I wasn't expecting that level of professionalism from your work, but it's really good, yeah, you know, it, and I think it's really catchy. Like, And I think one thing I like about Oklahoma City and our scene is that we don't just have a distinctive style. No. Every artist can bring something different, which you know? people think we do. And yeah. I, a lot of the newer people coming out are following each other and making the same sound, which annoys me. Yeah, see, and see what it is. I think what that came from is we had a distinctive sound because the music quality was so poor for a while to where every time something came from Oklahoma, you knew like, wow, uh, here you go. <laughs> Oklahoma you know Yeah, exactly. Well, but and I now, think another thing with you is like you said, you started older, 03. The internet wasn't as big exactly. when it came to music, was, while as these newer kids, they see on Instagram and SoundCloud what's popping, so they want that sound, while as you guys kind of had to originate and figure running. it out. Yeah, definitely. Like, because listen, you had to get that radio play. I had to. Like, it was crazy, because when I left, MySpace was the only thing. Right. Like, really, is that the worst So you came out the penny, yeah, so what is the what Instagram? Is, what is all this stuff, you know? Yeah. But no, I mean, and that's why it's a blessing for, like, younger artists to have these platforms to where they have access, because I used to always remember. And that's what we used to do. Hit the trunk, fill the CDs in the trunk, hit the highway, you know, hit every little thing we could. But then I started realizing the power of the internet now is like all this YouTube stuff, like it's dope. Like it really ain't no excuse. And that's why it's really a blessing for indie artists because you really don't need no labels. Like if you just work, 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 and your yeah. following come up, you don't need nobody to have their hand in your pot. Yeah. Straight up. That's why Nipsey hustling them, getting them big checks. You know, independent grind is where it's at, man. I'm just lead. I it. think the thing, I'm all about independent artists. I think most artists <clears throat> stay independent. I think what is so alluring is that they don't want to wait that time or wait. Because, like you just said, Nipsey. Nipsey's been in this game a Since, long time. Okay. Exactly. Okay. But, oh, right, I feel like recently is when he finally has now yeah. broken through that mainstream thing versus, you know, an artist. And most artists don't want to wait 10 years. Think about, for that. Now, think about E40. 
Oh, he's like, really, just literally really think about what we said. Like, it took he put it till just three years ago before he came commercial relevant. You feel me? Like where we started seeing right. on 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 uh, halftime of the All Star games and stuff like that. But this man been in the rap game since eighty four. Oh yeah, he's just, an OG. Yeah, they were too short. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? So you got all like, these OGs from the game that man, it's just crazy, man. Like, it's so and then like even the demographics of the game, like I heard, I've been around. I've been around. I've seen it all. I was a young pup when. Nitro was performing when he had his hustling pay billboards on the highway. I remember seeing that and be like, whoa, like, you this know. This is so cool. Yeah, young fool, rest in peace. Like, you know, Blacky Lock, all the old, like, you know, hip hop rappers. I've been around watching that, just, just about, you know, freestyling, doing my thing as a young man. So, how has it now helped you with the growth of Oklahoma City? Because I feel like now there's a lot more venues. Oh, there's so much man, more. So much. There's so many more. Um, what's the word? Avenues yes, like there's yeah. just a lot of opportunities. Yeah. There's a lot of different places you can have a show. And there's a lot more day. resources that people can use. I it's feel just, like now it blew my mind when I came home. Like this is exactly what happened to JB. I came home and uh, I was working at this place, and there was a magazine. It was a Gazette. I'm the Gazette. I'm going through it, and it had JB and Josh Sali in it. And I've been gone for six years. So I'm like, I thought it was dope. Like, damn, they got hip hop in the Oklahoma Gazette. Yeah. Hold on. So I went to the back. You know, I read it. I read up on him, I read up on Josh Nelly, then I asked Bottom, I'm like, who was uh, JB? Who do we like? Oh yeah, yeah, JB been around for a minute. He used to be in the house battles and freestyles with me. So I got to know him. You know what okay. I'm saying? It was cool. So you didn't know JB previously. No, no, no. Okay. We just I just we just built the relationship since I've been out. And then he checked my credentials. Yeah. And you know, people vouch for me. Yeah. I vouch for him that my music is dope. I did a show with him at the Blue Note. Like me and Bottom had a uh, show with him. From that point, like everywhere he was, I would. Mm -hmm. Like so, he had to respect that every time he's on the game showcase or you know, th whatever show he was on, I was on his heels somewhere around. Yeah. I had the mix, you know, grinded. <clears throat> and then, cause me personally, I got this little thing. It's like I think I was gonna change my name to uh, JG because it's like. <laughs> JB, J French. I think the J thing, like, maybe. <laughs> he was like, this was not what I need. Mean. Johnny <laughs> Polygon, Josh <laughs> Lynch. Like, Something about yeah, Oklahoma yeah, rappers yeah. with J's. Yeah, we get up in there. <laughs> no, but, seriously. But no, man, it just, I mean, I don't know. It's been a blessing, man. Like, really, I've been working hard, though. Like, even when the, uh, me and Bottom had a record, like, I like it. it. I was on Atlanta radio station, California radio station. I charted, Urban Indy charted. Like, we charted it for the Urban Indy charts. We was in Atlanta doing work. And from that point, <clears throat> I don't know. Like me and him had a disagreement, but you know, we kind of had to separate. And I had to rebrand. So now you know, I'm more, for, more vocal. Like I played the background, even though I was a boss. You know, I don't mind. It ain't never been about me. I ain't one of the people. Like I'm not. I, I got star power, but I don't care about none of that. Like really. I so don't. do you kind of want to take more on of like the background role and becoming more of like the CEO and building a brand, taking more like a Diddy route, you know? Instead of just like being the talent and being more of like, <laughs> I mean to be the but, connoisseur. Yeah, yeah, like to be honest, like I've learned a lot. So my, you know, as far as the market, learning a lot of stuff. People teach me through this four year run. I learned a lot, and it's like I'm at the window of my career where it's like do or die. So I already been working on transition, and transition is like my artist. I got my brand SFDF. I got a clothing brand, Stupid Fly Dunk Fresh. It's going like it was a record actually. I turned it to a brand featuring Polo. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's just been so much stuff, man. But, like, that's my thing. It's like, it's time to pass a torch, and I know it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, really, and I know the way, like, I can never make music like Lil Uzi, a Lil Pup, that simple Simon. I mean, no disrespect. That's the way that right. rock star stuff, I, I really can't catch it. Even if I tried to, I can pretend, but it ain't me. So, there's no need to, you know, even stay in that lane. So, I know what the music is, you know what I'm saying? I know what it sounds like. I know what it is. By the fact, I got a new art I love. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, honestly, that's great because I feel like so many people have such a hard time coming out of the spotlight because I feel like, unfortunately, music and specifically hip hop kind of has like an age limit. It has a time and there's, frame. It has a time frame and only so many artists are able to break through that time frame. And at that age, you got to be like a Nas, a Kanye or a Jay-Z. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I don't think. Or T.J. And yeah, see, two chains is really, I mean, the master. Oh, and two chains. He really was the master there. Like, when, when I was gone, when he finally broke, yeah. I was like, okay. He gave me confidence. He was like, okay, yeah, yeah. Two I, I got a got few more juice. years. Yeah, he got some juice <laughs> in him. Because I remember Titty Boy, two chains. I remember uh, with uh, DTP. I remember all that Duffer Bag Boy before I went in. Then he, it took like another four or five years. Then Kanye, and then he just got there, and he's still making hits. And so. I feel like this past album, this past project oh, yeah, that he was put, put out that track, was like that really his big thing. Project so far. Because yeah, when far we as, saw him in yeah. Oklahoma City, 
at the concert, it was crazy because most of the songs that got everybody hyped, we all realized were like Two Chainz features. They weren't like actually his songs. And then when he performed his songs, the best features. everybody was just kind of so like, it's his flow is so witty. It's everybody so was just kind of like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then like he played his feature verse, and we're like, oh, crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's how the man the game is. But yeah, but I feel like he's a special. Um, what is the word? I'm just not on it with my vocab today. Well, I'm I just I'm interested in I'm looking at your SoundCloud right now, mm -hmm. and um, I know you don't make a lot of you don't think you make a sound like that, but a lot of the newer artists in Oklahoma, you know, have think that they found that sound or tapped mm -hmm. into it. And do you see yourself ever doing collabs with them at least? Oh no, yeah. I'm when it comes to work, it, it's just my thing on that. I definitely with working with artists. Like I be having so many people I want to do features with, but I be working so hard on my brand. I really don't be having time to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do, but it's like it, I just don't. I don't know. Because I feel weird. like you produce a lot and you have a lot out there, but it's all like you. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And it's really good. I appreciate it. But you know, it's just been like because I at the rebranding. That's what it was like. I thought I had to separate it because I. That situation was supposed to be a group. It was like Rock Bottom and TG, but it ended up seeming like it was a group. So then when they, we separated, I really didn't want to do no more group thing. Like my brother came okay. home, he an artist for front of my label. Make it known yeah, for it just kind of single artist. And then even me and my brother, like I got a brother Shoe Shine. He the artist. He the uh, second artist from off our label. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Executive CEO as well. It's my brother. He just came home. So when we start working, every time I did something, people start asking like, "Oh, it's Shoe Shine." I'm like, "Look." He a solo artist. I'm a solo artist. Okay. Let's just keep this thing going. You know okay. what I'm saying? I, I got him on a remix for my single. He on a video. You know what I'm saying? Because <clears throat> it's a lot of stuff, but it's like I am to the point where I am. I got a, a roster of people on this uh, new project. I'm working with Navi Tide. I'm working Oh, he's with, dope. Yeah, he I'm was like, also at the, um, uh, the Night first, of Dreams. The event. Night of Dreams, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. He did a great job. That's why you know, I'm not implicating him because we was going to start working together up on my brand. Um, Butter Mac. He had a record uh, called Paints to the Side. Wayne on it. Yeah, Wayne on it. Wayne this thing is on there. Pete Polymore. So you got a pretty stacked yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, I got a nice little roster right now. But then my but my young life, Treesky. It's Treesky. I T S T R E S K E. It's Trisky. Hey, hey. This kid is amazing. He's and he's local? Yeah, he's mind blowing. Like literally. Like i he put him on an event, we rock and roll. Like I've been watching him for like two years. And ironically, I knew his mom. I reached out, like, ask who the kid is this? And she's like, that's my son. I'm like, that's your son. And we used to, like, record together in the studio, sleeping on the floor back in the gap before I, you know what I'm saying? I was like, what? Yeah. Long story short, man, I put him on the showcase because he danced. Mm -hmm. He a mind blowing performer. But then um, I listened to his music. And from that point on, it like gave me his. So is he a singer more so a rapper he or he, he, does, listen, oh, he does both? He's, he's like listen, so he's like listen, a listen, listen, this is a phenomenal kid, man. I'm not joking, y'all, <laughs> man. This guy is like Chris Brown mixed with a. Um, so he's like a Tory Lane. Tory Lane. That's what I'm saying. He, he listen. He rap like Tory, and he dances as good as Chris Brown. I'm not exaggerating. Oh, that's shit. a. It's a mind blowing, like real shit. And then that's a triple sing, threat right listen, there. No, he sing, rap, dance, mix, master, and start playing with his own beats. And he's 19. Oh, so he don't need nobody else. Hey, man. <laughs> and you found him. And I got blessed. He fell right in my lap. I'm going <laughs> to put that bag that. right behind him and run it up. <laughs> That's yeah. exciting, though. I mean, I feel like you actually have an eye for it because after seeing you perform that first time we worked together, yeah. I mean, you definitely have that. You, you, Your performance is just full like, of electricity energy, and yeah. energy and, like, Surprisingly, it puts on a better show, especially for people who have probably never heard your music before. Could you tell them that again so then these people that bring these artists down here, they can hit my phone and keep putting me on these showcases instead of playing? Like, no, I mean, I'm being no, honest with like. That's serious. Yeah, like, real shit. Cause like, I, if they're not, they really need to be because I was taken back because I, I hadn't listened to much of your music beforehand. You see, I was really busy. Action. But I like to listen to my music before I come, yeah. and I didn't get a chance to, but I was really paying attention to your performance, and I was taken back. It was good, you know? It. And it was, I, you know, I was lit. I don't know if it was because yeah. I was lit, but I was lit, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, I'm pretty no, sure it was you. No, you know, I, your litness. And I know the song's a real deal. Like, that's really my life. That's really my life. Like, I can record it looks like you new enjoy it. music. I can do all that to my eyes closed, but that stage is a different type of high, man. Like, mm -hmm. ever since I was a young, like, that was it. As a matter of fact, Scissor Hands, when I was a young kid, I did my first performance with Lloyd, and uh, my <laughs> Lloyd was at the Armory. 
Like, yeah, that long ago. And then uh, I was on top of the army and I was hanging off that raptor. Boy, he, he came and grabbed me. He said, man, what is your name, kid? Like, we ain't never seen nothing like this. I thought yeah. you were going to jump off that, that rail up there, bro. And from that point on, he always kind of just like, man, this kid, the energy. Like, you know what I'm saying? But. No, really, that's it, man. Like, the stage, that really is my... And a lot of artists get that confused because I know a lot of good artists in stage the studio. Stage presence, trash. But the stage presence is trash. like, they're standing there. I just went to see I'm Kodak like, Black, I and I was like, for real? Oh, the Dallas... The kid was just walking around. Like, I'm not saying rapping. He was just walking yeah. around. Not even... He didn't have... He let them do all the rapping. And he was like, damn, we, we paid him. Did we pay him? work? see you. you. And he just, damn. Yeah. I mean, I was like, okay, well, hey, you know. But no, that, that's really it, though. I mean, and even with the, um. Uh, and I don't know if it's because some of these artists are, like, on so much stuff or they drink it before they set and they just don't feel like putting in a good performance. I hate when an artist stands up there and just walks left to right. Oh, that's just. Right, you got 17 people on the stage with you and you don't know who. Yeah. Who's the one rapping. Like, how many homies? I mean, then, I mean, who's the artist here? And like, I think that, like, that can really okay. separate you from, like, an artist and show you have longevity. Like, even, like see like drake like he yeah. makes it a performance yeah you got like, some movie it's a movie yeah like, like it you want it's an experience yeah, that's what you're gonna feel and the thing is like and the thing is like you don't even have to have that much money behind you to really make your stage presence amazing you just right. gotta have at least practice right practice. what you gonna do and, and then well, speaking <laughs> of it, it's, it's so crazy because uh even with that like on showcases now when it comes to like people not being able to expand on what their ideas because like I'm gonna be honest, like a lot of these promoters and these club owners and shit, when they be doing these high profile shows, they don't give you eight minutes, uh seven minute slots. You feel me? Like you really can't do what how much can you do in eight minutes? It's like a song, another song, and then you got a little intermission. Cause you know I'm gonna have intro, outro, like. But you should make that seven. You should make. You, no, you gotta yeah, make it flex. Yeah. Cause I mean I've been doing it. Cause we one hottest song you got, and you need to go hard. Cause when yeah. we were in Los Angeles, we went to this like. Uh, Nike thing, remember when we saw that artist Lizzo? Mm -hmm. It was a short event. We saw this girl Lizzo, had never heard of her. We didn't know what to expect. Yeah. But her stage presence so just made it. We all go we just her turned, iTunes. Yeah, yeah, we're all in her yeah. iTunes. Like, exactly. when is this girl care. going on tour? Yeah. yeah. And then the, and she set the bar so high that when these next cats came out, we was like, bring oh, Lizzo yeah. back. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are y'all doing? The energy. Yeah. No. That's what it is, man. That's why, I mean, just real shit. I love it, man. That is really the truth, man. That stage is my life, like, real talk. Like, my DJ, like, especially when you got somebody really rocking with you. Because, like, when you, some of these cats, like I said, you go do a showcase and if they don't really rock with you, they just put your shit in there, run it, let you do your thing. But if you got somebody that really rock with you, you know, you drop the beat, you make the, get the crowd, you know what I'm saying? You got to yeah. work it, man. You just, yeah. The DJ and the artist need to, you know, work it, work it. So I'll use it bring my own. Person, good advice. Don't ever, ever reply on another guy to keep your showcases. Why are you a personal DJ, man? It's real shit, for real, for the road. All right, go ahead. So let's kind of talk about the Tower Showcase. Mm -hmm. That was about a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, That's two Fridays ago. As uh, a matter of fact, it was St. Patrick's Day weekend. Yes, there you go. And was so the roster was Jay French, mm -hmm. D9. D yeah. Is that how you said it? D9? Uh -huh. You, Sativa Profits, Mike Turner, Chris Savage, and Cartier Carter. Mm -hmm. So how was that? Unfortunately, I didn't get to make it. I really wanted to go. Yeah, I know it was a lot of people that didn't. I mean, it was so much going on that day. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day was just so, it was so much. I'm talking about even like, even in the towel, it was popping the next door. People was running around the next door. People was peeping over there. It was just chaotic. It was, it was a chaotic day. But uh, it was a good showcase. It was. Jay French was, uh, yeah. Jay Francis, yeah, that, it, was, it was a good show. What's the uh, what's the first uh, what is them young guys in? Chris Savage Chris, or Sativa Park. Chris Savage and Cardia Carter. Yeah, them two kids. I ain't never heard of them, but they had a dope, like energy on stage. I seen them; they was first, and I think I seen how they that they performance. They had a little following. They had people that came out and supported them. And that's another thing, man. I know. I'm just so I'm, I don't know, man. I'm just trying to keep real keep, neutral. Keep it real. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I try to give up, but it's like as an indie artist. It's frustrating. You know, verbal support is cool. You know, I, yeah, yeah, I see you, I see you, I see you. Everybody that see me always <laughs> getting paid me homage. I see you, I see you, I see you. I, congratulations. But it's like, I go look on my iTunes and I probably ain't got nothing but like 75 downloads. And I know over probably three, four 400 people that said, good job, what's up, man, keep doing it. It's just, I don't know, the irony in that is awkward, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay. Oh, I see you. I, I, saw, I told everybody you went up next. You the next nigga out here. I'm telling you, keep grinding for the streets, blah, blah, blah. 
But these same street niggas is telling me all this shit. I don't ever see them in my showcases. So it's kind of like, man, you know, all right. You know what I'm saying? I heard you. But then I promise you, it's a quote. Yeah, I think Richard said it. He said, uh, how that shit go? I think it was like uh, years later, somebody was tell me, telling people how much they how much they knew you. How, how they knew you, but they really never even knew you. Like, real shit. It's going to be all good. When the bag comes, oh, that was my hobby. I knew him. I knew, I knew, I knew. Yeah, but right now, when you grind, it's like, man, all right. <clears throat> all right. And that's why I think, that's one thing I hate about the market around here. It's like, we working more together, which is good. But all the lack of respect that people have for people's grind, I don't really appreciate that. Like, I don't think, I don't understand why no artist in the state of Oklahoma is not behind JB and whatever he do. I don't care if it's not your music. I don't care if it's, you don't like conscious music. I don't care if it ain't turn up. It's the fact that as a black brother and as a hip hop artist, this kid is like really doing what he's supposed to do. Like, I mean, why you can't just pay homage to that? Just, you know, everybody follows suit, but it's like, everybody, I don't fuck with that. And that's so confusing to me because I feel like we as Oklahomans are. Oklahoma hip hop scene in general has not made it to the mainstream yeah. at all. Like that. we don't have like a person, and I feel like JB is the closest yeah. thing to yeah. that. Yeah. So but. I don't understand how even if I was like a new artist, how I would come through just like thinking I'm this or that, or I don't even know why we even have beef. Like I get it. There's people you're not gonna like. That's fine. There's a lot of people I don't like, but I also don't feel the need to like go beef with them every time when we. Can, I know we're gonna be in the same circles, and I feel like. That's how it is a lot of times with like local artists. And I'm like, do y'all not realize we're more powerful together and look, and that's than we are separated? Yeah. And I have literally started a movement and this is united. Like real shit. Like greatness and move like, and you understand not a dream thing. That was an idea I came up with like just because me and Ronnie was talking and she wanted to do a showcase for me. This mean I was like, man, fuck me, man. Yeah. I, man everybody I ain't about me. It's more other great shit around her. Let's you feel me? Like I said do something and then she was like, she told me about her girl that did art, which was shy. And then I met you, that's why I came up. I was gonna do it at the tower. I had brought some artists together and tried to get them to come and they all kind of then it was like, okay, well, you know, we just downsize it. Do the same thing, use fashion, art, music, and run it. And they, they did a damn good job. Mm-hmm. And not even just that, like this movement I got going on. It's really united. Like I don't care. I don't care about crowd promoting. I don't care about sharing your shit. I don't care about your fans can be my fans. See these people out here so weird. They really believe like, oh man, these are my fans. Mm, I don't want to live and hear your shit. Right. Cause y'all, uh, uh, no old oh boy. Like and it's just weird to me. Like I mean, it's, I don't. And that's one thing about me. Like it's my squad. It's me. It's my PZNT Streets United State Gang. Um. And that's really in Street United is like out of Tulsa. That's DJ Big Rich, uh, David Puffin, 24K All Star. Which I don't really know. I'm not familiar with Tulsa artists. Never, and the just, first time I heard about any of them was when the nominees for the Oklahoma yeah. Hip Hop Awards yeah. happened. And then mentions got flooded. And so, like, me being a part of that because I was hosting it, I'm yeah. like, y'all not about to talk down on our event. Yeah with my name attached and think that like it was something yeah. shady so i wish you know we could collab more with those Listen, let me people. tell you something about yeah. the Tulsa artists right now like they really got something going on bees it's i'm gonna keep on i was in Tulsa than- last night and i i was talking to somebody about hip-hop and they said my favorite oklahoma artist was grand i said really and then their second favorite oklahoma artist was someone from out of tulsa i can't remember his name i'm trying to think of it now but he was like man this dude is cold like no, the Tulsa rap scene is nice up here. And I've been to the Yeti, and I've been to the Yeti and seen some shows. And my thing is, like, I wish everybody, like, I get you can be prideful, and I think you should have, I don't want to say an arrogance, but a confidence about yourself. Yeah, yeah. But don't be shrewd. Yeah. Exactly, and that's the one thing that turns me off because I'm like, we ain't got ain't no. Nobody, drink. Listen, ain't nobody <laughs> look exactly, and nobody got no bag. <laughs> like, I was just sitting at JB in my house, like, because some situation that happened at the tower, he didn't like, and I was with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, bro, I ain't with that funny shit, bro. I don't care what it is. Right or right, is wrong or wrong. You know what I'm saying? And he don't even act like that. He didn't, okay. And he invested his money into the tower, into restaurants, and all kind of shit. So if anybody want to flex, he should be the one fucking really acting like that. And he's still so humble. And he's still humble. He's supposed so to be. Yeah, because he, he ain't worried about everyone. that. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't worried about all that shit. And that's just honest. I mean, that's just being honest, man. Like, it's just so ridiculous. So, like, we start moving together. And I've seen this chain reaction. 
because other people starting to jump on. Like, they like, okay, yeah, I mean, because it ain't about that. Dope music is dope music, no matter where you're from, what demographics, where you look like. I don't care. Yeah. White, black, girl. If it's dope, it's dope. Like, put this shit out there. Tell everybody about it. Why wouldn't you? Like, I know it's confusing to me. Like, you can go through my phone, I swear to God. I got iTunes download from uh, Meant to Be's records to, um, what's the little girl's name that was on around right here for a minute? Oh, uh, I don't mean to call a little girl. What is her name? <laughs> oh, I think she was girl. Uh, Aisha. Okay. Aisha. I'm not uh, familiar with her. I've yeah. heard of Aisha. Yeah, yeah, Aisha's little records. I mean, I got, I mean, anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jay French is both of his albums is on my phone. Like, uh. I also think. The audience here in Oklahoma doesn't know how to support our artists here at the same time because a lot of people here aren't even in touch with mainstream music as well as they should be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or who keep up with mainstream music yeah. as easily as it can be kept up with? Because we get good artists here every once in a blue moon, and sometimes even the turnout for those shows. Oh yeah, no, because right. it, now one thing I just said the demographic. One thing I know that it's unpredictable market. The market is really like that. You never know. You can have a, a sellout show and then come back. It's 90 days later and have nobody there. Like, yeah. it just be like this sometimes. And then even with that, it's like, I don't know. I just kind of even gauge it to, with us, I don't, it's just, it's confusing, man, because I've been around for a long time and I sit there and watch it. And it's just doing better. And it's like, and then it's like either the, the DJs and the artists thing. Like, it's a lot of DJs that really ain't, you know, They'll buddy up with an artist because he's from LA, he's from California, he's from whatever, but forget about everybody else because we from here. They look at us like we regular motherfuckers, no matter if the music is dope. At the same time, I feel like some of those artists who do branch out of Oklahoma City for help are kind of feeling like they need to do that because everybody in Oklahoma City is kind of like, no, I'm going to help myself. No, I'm going to help myself. No, I'm traveling to the bucket. No, I'm traveling to the bucket there. Like, no, that's what I'm saying. And that's what the weird about it is like, I don't know, my. My vision was really, even with that, it was just like bringing everybody together and to be the ambassador of it and filter out the bullshit. Because there's a lot of too much shit going on that shouldn't be going on. And at the end of the day, it's only one, two things are going to happen. Either we're going to boss up, handle our business, and get control of our market and make this painful. Because until we own our market and get control of it, we're going to be keep on spinning our wheels. Everybody going to keep on looking like this. Because it don't really take nobody to go out of state if we all start funneling our money within each other. If everybody starts supporting everybody's move, these are when the money start currency start coming in, at the end of the day, we all gonna get paid. But everybody wanna go over here, let's spend with these people, I'll go out of here and I, okay, either that's gonna happen, or we're gonna sit here and keep playing blind, and we're gonna let somebody come from California or Vegas and we have enough money, he's gonna buy all the shit, bring all his homies in, bring all their artists in, and they're gonna run the market. Then we're going to be on the outside looking in, yeah, stupid, and knocking on the door. Yeah. Especially, it's funny to me, because everybody wants to go L.A., New York, Atlanta. And those are already just so saturated markets yeah. who already have their own Man. feeling things. So you trying to already pave your way into a market that is already oversaturated and got more already. people there. Exactly. And then that's what I'm saying. Y'all think, man, I would tell them every time, man, it's <laughs> strategic and calculated plays, man. Y'all think that Mayweather just bought that, this, that all that shit was just for a skit. He see this, we licking the chops. He seeing all this money. Right. He see all this land, all this shit. Man, they ain't, they ain't finna run it up. They got what you mean. Why wouldn't you? It's wide open. And anybody to come down here and see it growing, if you got a bag, you better drop it. Like, why not? Like, it's only going to spend, like, in the next, in a, in a, you know what I'm saying, in, in due time. When you got bags like that, you can do it. Everybody want to, okay, you got to go out of state and work. I agree. I agree. You can't just sit here and expect to drop a dime, man. I mean, it's a rare chance of hell, but you know what I'm saying? Like, we do know that. But like I said, man, when you do go out and funnel and get these resources, you come back with the resources and you turn your partners on. Turn everybody else on. Like, look, okay, we can go to Denver. I got this lined up. Go to this showcase. It only gonna cost us a round trip. We got free us, uh, new artists, whoopy whoop whoop. Or we can go to Kansas. Oh, and that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to get on this tri tri region, man. This little Kansas, Arkansas, Texas. Tri state. Oh, yeah, yeah, try. Yeah, I'm just gonna run it up all around, over and over and over. Try to find me some venues and just you know keep building. I just keep building, man. And at the end of the day, like I said, we have to, man. We gonna have to get our hands on the market, own it. And we and it's too it's too it's too much talent and it's too many smart people there's too many connected people there's too many people with the proper resources and everybody holding on to their resources because at the same time everybody still want to be that motherfucker and it's like that shit is like I'm done with that like y'all still chasing the number one who gonna be the one the one is already done the kid and done it 
He got an Emmy. He got a shit. He done it. He well known. He was on tour with uh Killer Mike. I mean, what more do we got to do? Damn, you just because he ain't pulled up in a fan. I mean, y'all don't respect him. Right. That shit whack. Like straight up. I don't care what they say. They like, oh, until he pull up in the Lambo, I don't believe him. Mm mm. And I mean, <laughs> and I don't even know why that's Lambo like. The, I don't even. Yeah, I don't even what know why that. I don't even know why that's a bar to reach because yeah. you can get a car. You can lease a car. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to make your life look like. Something is oh, yeah, not. Oh, and yeah. how many artists do we know who just go and lease at first, Girl, then make their music? People that yeah. you think is <laughs> popping are really not, not popping. Pop. Oh, man. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. And it just be weird, man. I don't know. But I just, like I said, it's been a blessing, though, to watch the game evolve to this. Like, I really do appreciate it. I really do. I see how it's going. I see how people working. I like. I just got access to a venue free of charge downtown. Like I ain't never had that happen before. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you know, just little stuff like that is a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Like just honestly, it really has been, man. And it's been really my social circle. I've been has advanced corporate people instead of you know everybody on the all outside looking in. And that's another thing. Is like that's a quote. Another quote is like if they feel like you'll be better than them, they won't help. Like that's really how that we rock like here. Oh if they gosh, really feel like you're be better, so that's true. Like if they feel like you're gonna be better than them, they won't help you, man. Mm, they're like ah, whatever. Even though, even though you can help them out in the long run, it's just it's like, hey, can we help each other right now? Hey man, I'm gonna tell you, even the kid, like even <laughs> the situation. Say yeah, just saying, like even the situation <laughs> with the little Trisky kid, it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks because I remember being 19 and being that dope and praying every night, wishing somebody saved me from the streets. And gave me a chance to just do what I love to do. You feel me? And I just looked at him. I'm like, there's no way I can just let this little kid just sit back and waste his juice. Like, because I know he got it. He owns it. That's yeah. what I love. Like, he just like work. Sometimes you just need someone to just help you get your foot in the door. Yeah. Like, that's all you need. Is. And it's good that you notice newer artists and you're willing, you're willing to step out of your way to help him. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Whereas other people are like, oh, well, he on his own. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I have to I'm focused on my own, own career, you know? No, so. because, I mean... It, I don't know. It'll all come back around. It will. Like, just, I mean, this is when it comes to blessings. Like, I'll just have, man, ask anybody about me, man. I ain't never did nothing for nobody. And remember what I did for you? I ain't one of them. Yeah. I ain't gonna, I don't got time for that. And then it's just like, everything is genuine, good. man. Just genuine. I'm just a genuine dude. Like, I don't got time for the fugazi. Like, I just know no matter what, even if you, like, for instance, if I put this kid on, he just go catapult to the moon and forget about me. Okay. It will it hurt. Yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> duh. But, they gonna but find it, out. But it's is, is he gonna is gonna fucking break me down to make me stop doing what I'm doing? No, because at the end of the day, my blessing gonna come back tenfold later. It might not be right then. It be like three years later. And it may be right. seven times bigger than his. Right. And you usually, feel? if you are there and you're that person not looking for a handout, it's gonna come back around. Right. They're gonna remember what they yeah, did for yeah, you. I'm telling you, that's the truth. So let's kind of talk about your new album real quick. Yeah. Okay, so I did a. Uh, I was, was doing a chapter series. It was the second chapter. But on the second chapter, it's kind of like a compilation because it's going to be like all my artists, all the people I got up on me working. Um, I got a couple singles. Shushan got a single coming out. He's going to drop solo with a visual. Uh, Treesky up first. Uh, I got a drip single. I'm going to drop with him and a visual. Then we're going to put out this project. It's like a compilation. I'm going to drop uh, Treesky's uh, three. It's called three. We're going to drop both of them at the same time. So I'm gonna have like something for the streets, and then I'm gonna have something for the R&B and hip hop. It's gonna be dope, man. And um, I did really like I said, I'm kind of like backing up for a minute. I'm taking a little hiatus. I mean, I'm gonna be around. You gonna see? I me. mean, you sound like you' about to do some managing, yeah, yeah, some yeah, mentoring. Yeah, 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 so. exactly, exactly. That's Young Kobe. I call him Young Kobe. I'm yeah. like MJ. That's Young Kobe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look at that Young Kobe bringing the six rings back to the house. Well, I'm excited really? to see that. I mean. I'm looking at Trisky right now, um, they sound cloud. I'm about to listen to some of his music after this. But I'm I'm really glad you came out to let us know about this. Um also <laughs> um Trapster too. Is that what you're gonna call yeah, it? Yeah, the second Trapster? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so I don't know this. I'm looking at this first one and you got like twenty songs on it. <laughs> I'm looking at some of the I see shoe shine, shoe shine, shoe shine. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna have everybody on it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like anyone who doesn't do like you have producers and mm -hmm. like, every like my my producers like right now my in house producers Chris Cutter all my hits I do Cutter classics he did basic basic yeah, bitch he did basic bitch he did all my records every single record I got I like it that it's tried it he did that okay so that's my in house producer and um 
Rob Stovall. I'm finna get some beats from him. Ooh, Rob, okay. Rob Stovall got some slappers. I've been checking him out. Any other producers? Uh, uh, it's another cat called Cuddy. Uh, Cuddy Beats. It's one of my nephew's friends. He's been sending me a lot of beats. There's a lot of talent. In yeah, yeah, it really is. Wise. Really is. Yeah, I didn't even realize when I had a conversation recently, and we were talking about Rob Rob Stovall, mm-hmm. and I didn't realize he had produced a lot of sounds I had been listening to. I'm like, oh, he's pretty cool. Yeah, he don't, he don't, he don't. So that's it, and I kind of just be shopping around a little bit. I got some people in Vegas because I worked out with Mitchy Slick. He's from the West Coast. He's a veteran rapper, but I've been messing with his producers. They be uh, sending me stuff. But like really, this compilation is kind of be like, like I said, all my artists, like just really bringing, putting them to the forefront, letting them, you know, brainstorm. We're gonna all work together, come up with something. We finna knock it out. Is there a release date? Actually, we don't have a exact release date, but I'm looking around mid April. Okay. So what's we'll this? Have a listening party this month. Oh uh, yeah, we definitely. I'm thinking listening about listening compilations think, oh, this, showcase. Yeah, I'm thinking about having a uh, listening party in the. Uh, I have to do this visual uh, at uh, Council Row Studios. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I'm about to record. Man, that's nice, man. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that studio. Yeah. Definitely let us know. We're yeah, trying to go yeah. backstage. We yeah, want to talk about up. it. Yeah, definitely pull up. We gonna, we got a lot of stuff, man, going on. I mean, like I said, uh, after this is done, I'm going to hit the road. Got a lot of resources. I'm going to start tapping in with it. Been waiting for me to come out there and holler at them. So I'm going to really just utilize all my resources I've gained in the four years I've been grinding and just put the pieces to the puzzle, man. And I really feel like this tree ski is the key to everything. Like this year, because it's the new wave, it's the yeah. new sound. I'm telling you, listen, I'm thinking y'all bullshit. <laughs> this kid danced harder than Chris Brown. <laughs> I'm about to go back. Go to YouTube. Go to and pull up. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> uh, let me see what the name of it is. Oh, you're going to see tree ski. I could, I'll show you this one. It's the one where, um, let me see. I'm going to tell you exactly what it's called. It's called Treesky W O D. T R E A S K. T R E S K E. And it's W O D as well. It's a lot of work. Okay. Well, yeah. TG, thank you for joining us today. I know we've been trying to get you here for a while, but I'm glad we got to have you because you have a lot to drop, but I think I like. I, I really like talking to the older cats in yeah. the game because it just you've seen it evolve and you've seen it change. Well, I appreciate it, and I think that's important to note. I appreciate it that it wasn't all what it is now. Exactly, that's why I, that's why I appreciate it more than everybody else do. Like I really do. It's a blessing, like to watch it, just to watch it evolve and be a part of it. It's dope. Well, do you want to plug your social media right quick? Oh yeah, man, follow yeah. me, man, please. T G P Z E N T on all. Social sites, uh, you can go tgpzent.com. I got all my social media sites that are all interactive on my website. You just click on the uh, logo. What is it called? It's an icon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> just click on the icon, and uh, it's going to line you up with it. TGPZNT, all social media sites, man. Salute to the old man. Salute to everybody that's out there grinding, man. Stay active, man. I was up. Hey. Well, thank you for joining us and coming in another episode of Backstage, Backstage OKC. Yes. And we'll, we'll see, see you guys soon. later. Hey, definitely, definitely. Salute.